Hello everyone and welcome to the span of lecture as we are giving short lectures regarding a specific topic in ECG which is spinning off from a large topic and here we are discussing a span of lecture from the bradyarrhythmia and today we are discussing isorhythmic AV dissociation which of course is not a common term for many of you in order to hear about and sometimes it can appear in ECG and it appears confusing for some of us so let's discuss in short today what's isorhythmic AV dissociation. So our idea today is to learn how to diagnose it in ECG and to learn its clinical significance. So let's at first look at this ECG. What can we notice in this ECG? Some people may say just I see sinus rhythm and there is no problem with this. And there's normal R wave progression. The axis is normal, seeming okay. Complex duration, P wave, T wave, one to one AV relationship. So there is no problem. But if we focus on the ACG, especially in the strip in lead two, we can focus here and look that the P wave with the complex something strange is happening here. We can find that the PR interval is not the same. Yes, there is one to one AV relationship, of course. But sometimes the P appear before the complex in a normal way and normal PR interval and sometimes it appears like fused with the complex so what's happening here? what's this called? this is called isorhythmic AV dissociation so let's at first explain it in another ECG we can see here of course the same pattern we can see here that the P wave sometimes for example here in the first speed the arrow shows that it comes before the complex and in the next speed it slightly appear before after the complex, the same in the third beat, in the fourth beat. On the fourth beat, it is before the complex, but it is newly fused with the complex. And then in the beat next to it, it appears slightly before the complex. And then in the last two beats, it is normally before the complex with normal PR interval. So again, what's going on here? Let's at first explain the name. Isorhythmic, it means that the atrium and the ventricle have the same rate. So there is one-to-one -one relationship. The P wave each P wave is followed by a complex, but the problem is that they are dissociated from each other because the atrium and the ventricle work independently. And this explains why the PR interval is variable. It is not just only variable, but the P waves sometimes come inside the complex or after the complex. This means that the atrial rhythm is completely independent from the ventricular rhythm. And so the pacemaker for the atrial rhythm is separate from the pacemaker for the ventricular rhythm. So where is the problem here? Either the first thing, there is something like an accelerating junction rhythm competing with a slowing down sinus rhythm. So for example here, the sinus rhythm is slightly slowing down due to sinus bradycardia or sinus arrhythmia, which sometimes may occur normally in some people, like in athletes for example. And here the junction rhythm is accelerated, it is not an escape rhythm as we discussed before in bradyarrhythmia, no. It is an accelerated rhythm, like for example with a heart rate about 50 to 60 speed per minute, or sometimes above 60 speed per minute. And the SA node is slowing down, and this leads to that they have the same rate. So the atrium is spaced by the SA node, while the ventricle is spaced by a junctional rhythm. And so here, the, there is no AV conduction. The AV node is not conducting because the ventricle is spaced by a separate rhythm from the AV node. So this is one of the theories explaining isorhythmic AV dissociation. And so we can consider this like a penine competition between the sinus rhythm and the junction rhythm, but with a tie because they have the same rate. So the ventricle doesn't follow the sinus rhythm. Another theory that there is a problem in the AV node itself. It is not just that it is dormant because there is an accelerated junction rhythm. No, there is a problem in the conduction. And so it is a pattern of complete AV block, third degree AV block. And so here, the junction rhythm is not just an escape rhythm, but it is slightly accelerated. And the SA node also is slightly slowing down. And so they have the same rate. So here we have third degree AV block, but the rhythm below the AV node is not just an escape rhythm, it is slightly accelerated and having the same rate of the SA node. So it is like an unusual presentation of third degree AV block because commonly in third degree AV block we find that the atrial rate is more than the ventricular rate as we discussed before. Here the atrial rate is the same as the ventricular rate and this explains one to one AV relationship. So we can consider this like a third degree AV block with an accelerating junction rhythm rather than an escape rhythm like we see in the common scenario for complete AV block. So, of course, we may ask ourselves, 
How does synchronization occur despite actual dissociation? There is complete dissociation between the atrial rhythm and the ventricular rhythm, but they are synchronized. How they are synchronized? Because there is one-to-one -one AP relationship, and each complex has an accompanying P wave, but they are dissociated, and this explains why the P wave sometimes occur before, sometimes within, sometimes after the complex. The theory here explains that the slowing down of the SA node due to sinus bradycardia, for example, allows us an ventricular pacemaker response or an accelerated junction rhythm to pace the ventricle. Most probably it is the junction rhythm. In very rare case, it may be a ventricular rhythm, but usually it is accelerated junction rhythm, usually at a heart rate that not exceeding 60 feet per minute, but it is not escape rhythm with bradycardia. And this explains why sometimes we see the ECG of isorhythmic AV dissociation at a heart rate between 50 to 60 feet per minute in most of the cases. And so here, in presence of a degree of anti-grade and retrograde AV block, there is a synchronization because there is no intrinsic AV conduction, but they have the same rate. And so we find that the AV relationship is one to one because of the slowing down SA node and accelerated rhythm in the junction or in the ventricle. So there is no anti-grade or retrograde conduction through the AV node here. So remember that idorhythmic AV dissociation represents something called synchronized dissociation. They are synchronized because of the one-to-one -one AV relationship, but they are actually dissociated because the complex doesn't follow the P wave in the normal way that we see in normal sinus rhythm. So this means that the sinus or the atrial rhythm works independently from the junction or even directly rhythm, but they are synchronized with one-to-one -one relationship, but not a consistent relationship. So here we can see in this example here, sometimes the P wave appears before the complex, like in the first and second beat. In the third beat, it is slightly fused with the complex. In the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh beat, and also seventh beat, they are nearly within the complex themselves. So idorhythmic AV dissociation is not common in the general population, but it is the most innocent type of AV dissociation because you are not going to see it very common. But when you see it, it is characteristic, but it's something like an innocent type of AV dissociation due to the one-to-one -one relationship. Of course, we should note that it occurs in up to 20% of endurance athletes because it occurs only with the sinus rhythm is close to the junction rhythm. And of course, we know the high vagal tone in athletes. So it is common to see this pattern and it is something benign to see in athletes. So let's summarize the criteria for isorhythmic AV dissociation. Both the independent and the both the atrial and ventricular rate are bradycardic and nearly identical in contrast to other types of AV dissociation. So the first criterion of AV dissociation here that the atrial rate and the ventricular rate is equal, and this is explains the one-to-one -one AV relationship. The second criterion here is that there is varying B location, sometimes before, sometimes within, sometimes after the complex, as we saw in the previous examples, but always closely approximated and appearing to wander around the QRS complex. The third criterion is that sometimes fusion or capture peat may be present when the atrial or the ventricular rate becomes faster than the other. At this condition, anterograde conduction may occur or retrograde conduction through the AV node. So I can see some different types of complexes because here it was not, for example, the juncture rhythm that occurs, but there was an anterograde AV conduction. But if they are the same rate and there is no any difference, like in most of the cases, the complex morphology would be the same throughout the ACG strip. So remember, of course, that AV dissociation here is considered a symptom or a result of an underlying rhythm disturbance. Either the first theory that there is an accelerating juncture rhythm competing with a sinus bradycardic rhythm, or there is a complete AV block and this is an accelerated juncture rhythm rather than escape rhythm. So it is not a primary arrhythmia, but it is a result or a symptom. So Isorhythmic AV dissociation is usually asymptomatic, but when you see it in the ECG and diagnose it, it needs close monitoring, and sometimes it may need treadmill tests to differentiate between the two causes, whether it is accelerating juncture rhythm competing with the sinus rhythm, or it is an unusual presentation of complete AV block. So this patient needs admission on a monitored bed, and he needs treadmill. Why he needs treadmill, and how does a treadmill differentiate between the two causes? For example, here, we can see in the first example that the patient has isorhythmic AV dissociation with an atrial and ventricular weight 60 feet per minute. So the patient under underwent treadmill test. What have we seen here? The atrial rate increased and also the ventricular rate increased. 
This means that the intrinsic AV conduction was restored because the iterate rate accelerates and this restores the one-to-one -one AV conduction and the synchronization and so there is no dissociation anymore. And this explains that the accelerating junction rhythm is not working here because the intrinsic AV conduction predominates and so the ventricle follows the atrium. So there is no problem here in the AV node and this has no clinical significance and this is what we see commonly in athletes. So the treadmill test here explains that there is no problem with the AV nodes and when you just accelerate the atrial rate with exercise, the ventricle follows the atrium and the junction rhythm doesn't work anymore. But there is another example. Here, when we subject this patient to a treadmill test, the atrial rate increased, but the ventricular rate remains nearly the same. So this explains that actually there is a problem with the AV node. And this explains that the ventricle didn't follow the atrium when it accelerated its rate. And so it is actually an accelerated junction rhythm as a result of complete AV block. And so when I see this pattern in the treadmill test, it explains to me that it's complete AV block with accelerated junction rhythm. And so this patient may need temporary pacemaker and we need to search for reversible causes for AV block or consider it as irreversible if we didn't find any cause. So at the end of this short spinoff lecture, we understand how to diagnose isorhythmic AV dissociation in an ECG. And as we told before, it is uncommon to see it, but when you see it, it is very characteristic and you need to diagnose it shortly because of the characteristic pattern in the AV relationship. And also we understand now its clinical significance that in most of the cases, it is just a benign type of AV dissociation that has no clinical significance like in athletes, just a competition between the two rhythm, but sometimes it may be an unusual presentation of third degree AV block. So our take home message today is that isorhythmic AV dissociation is a peculiar type of arrhythmia that needs monitoring and investigating its causes as we mentioned before, due to the phenomenon of synchronized dissociation. And of course, don't forget that it may be an innocent presentation of third degree AV blocks that may be overlooked. And so it is considered a high grade AV block, especially if you perform the treadmill test and it showed to you that there is no acceleration of the ventricular rate. And so at this case, this patient may need pacemaker implantation in some cases. Thank you very much for your listening.